everybody, welcome back to my Daily Dose with Tim. Today is Season 2, Episode 15. So, today is the Part 2 of the Burr series this season. And thanks to a lot of you guys. And the reason why I'm actually jumping onto the Burr topic was because we started out the week with looking at flip as a strategy and how the numbers work. And a lot of you guys are suggesting that, hey, why don't we actually tag on the Burr process as a part of the flip topic as opposed to jumping over to wholesale and assignment. I mean, wholesale and assignment is gonna come up at some point because that is something that I do wanna touch on with all of you guys as well. However, it makes so much sense for us to actually be looking at the bird process. So today is part two of this episode and originally part two was gonna be it as well. However, you guys, I love, 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 love your feedback because you're asking me so many different questions and now it's giving me the inspiration and the idea that next week, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry on showing you how you can structure burrs creatively. So either you have the resources yourself, meaning you get the down payment and the mortgage qualification yourself to borrow money, or you don't. And if you want, want to go into a joint venture partnership, how would that look like? How would you speak to it? How would you structure it? Or if you just want to borrow money from a hard money lender, whatever the case may be, that is what's going to be coming up next week. You guys are geniuses. So keep giving me your feedback and because I love them. And honestly, though, I did have a general direction and I do still have a general direction in terms of how this entire season is going to go, as you know. However, there's a lot of flexibilities within. And Funny enough, that's actually very similar to how we operate as professional real estate investors is that we maintain flexibility as much as we possibly can and we are able to do that because before we get into any single deal, we always, always make sure that we have multiple, multiple exit strategies. And we've mentioned this already, at the very, very minimum, you need two exit strategies before you go into any deals. However, right now, let's just focus on the numbers today because that's what today is all about. So over the last few days, I've actually walked you through some deal analysis on the flip side. Today, I'm gonna just walk you through a very, very typical burr, especially using the numbers on one of the properties that we've actually done in our home market, which is Edmonton, Alberta in Canada. Now, the concept though, once again, is very, very universal. So regardless of which market, which countries you're in, this is really, as I keep saying, I may not look it, however, you know, pushing 40, that, what that really means is when I first learned this, burr as a term did not actually exist. However, as a process, that's what makes sense. For us, it, it was always about money in, money out, and we get to ideally leave as little money in the deal as possible, so hopefully we can get the asset for free, and at the same time, making sure that there is cash flow on a monthly basis, which means that you get the income from that property for life, if you hang on to it for the rest of your life. And so that's really the old school way of thinking about it. However, I do like how it's been abbreviated at this point so that it makes the process that much simpler for most people to understand as well. And so carrying on, the reason why a lot of us enjoy the bird process is simply because of the fact that it's very scalable and whether or not you have resources, it's completely secondary. In fact, it doesn't matter what strategy that you go into. I always like to tell my students that Money is going to be your least limiting factor when it comes to investing. Why? Because if you know what it is you're doing and you understand how to locate, find good deals, how to analyze the numbers and build in the protections for you and your investors, it is very easy for you to go out there and get other people to put their funds into your project. Because as long as you're making the money and you can show them how their money is protected, remember, we always say, a money investor's four main questions have always been how much in, how much out, how long it's going to take, and how is their money secured? And so I'm gonna show you today now, and I think some light bulbs will go off as well. Now, one of the deals that we did, quite recently, the purchase price is $250,000, okay? 
And when I'm saying burr in this particular case, I'm also not talking about duplexing. I'm not talking about sweeting. We're just talking about straight up, straight up flips. And as we cover at the beginning of the week, flip basically just means very, very basic cosmetic upgrades, okay? Nothing crazy, no structural changes, no knocking down walls, no removing posts, nothing like that. So purchase price was $250,000. And what we ended up doing was the renovation cost based on the best, most valuable quote that we got was $45,000. And this, I'm just gonna give you a little bit more details, includes a complete flooring upgrade. That also means baseboards. And then that also means fresh coat of paint throughout. And this is all interior work, okay? And then we change the doorknobs and then the handles. We did not actually get a brand new kitchen. However, we have upgraded appliances and we upgraded the windows and we upgraded two bathrooms in the entire unit, okay? So that's what $45,000 got us. And in and out, we were in and out in about four and a half weeks pretty fast. So this is about just a bit over a month. Okay. So right now, these are the high level numbers. When we get into the deal, the fees involved would be your legal, your inspection and your appraisal. So what that came up to be for us was $3,200. Our entire holding cost throughout the month-ish time. Okay, so here is where it gets a little tricky. Why? Because we got the job done so quickly and it was actually during COVID. And what that really meant was that a lot of the lenders processing time was actually backed up. It was taking a lot longer. So the ironic part is most of the times when you have projects where you have to add value, force appreciate, meaning you've got to do renovations, it's usually the renovations itself that's delayed. In this particular case, it's actually the refinance process that was delayed. So in total, it actually took us almost three months to get the refinance going. Okay. So, Basically for us, it was about $900 on a monthly basis. So three months time is $2,700. I'm just gonna write it down here for you guys. And then when we decided to refi, well, we had to actually go and speak to a mortgage broker. And in this particular case, when we refinanced the property, there were some fees involved because the investor that we are using they don't qualify for a lenders anymore. They don't qualify with, with the cheapest lenders possible. And that typically would be your major banks, whichever country that you're actually living in. Okay. So the fees there, and here is the thing that we're going to be taking a quick detour on now, which is it might really help to tell you that when we actually decided to refinance, obviously we have to do the appraisal once again. And this is actually lender appointed. This property, when we first decided to do this, we had an ARV estimated to be at three, about 30 to about 370,000. Okay. 330 to about 370. However, by some luck, well, the contractor did a much better job than expected and we decided not to cheap out oh i forgot here we have lighting changes as well lighting fixtures were also completely updated and that includes the switches too okay i'll make that note here for you now just so that you all know give you an idea so lighting fixtures that includes the switches okay so as you can see, like everything is very cosmetic. However, to our surprise, when the, when the appraiser came in at the end there, COVID and all doesn't matter. Our actual appraised value was actually at 385,000. Okay. And 
even though even though we were only able to get second tier or B landers, depending on what kind of wording that you like or where you're from, once again, we were actually able to qualify for 80% loan to value refinance, which pretty much in this country is the highest possible when it comes to a rental property. Okay, so here I want you to take your calculators out 385,000. 80% loan to value, 385, sorry, bad fingers. <laughs> that means we took out $308,000 when we went into refinance, okay? I just want you to kind of keep that number in mind for now because what I'm going to go through now is the exit fees. Exit not as in selling the property, however, during the refinance process. Because there is $308,000 that we took out through a B lender, what the lender wanted was to charge a 1% fee, and that fee comes with, for us, GST as well. So that's our, provincial, uh, that's our federal sales tax. So 308,000, 1% is $3,080, plus the 5% tax, that is three, two, three, four, right off the bat. We also had to pay about $470,000 in appraisal fees. One of the episodes that I spoke about during season one included the common expenses that are forgotten very, very easily by a lot of investors or amateur flippers. For that matter is a couple of fees that you might want to consider in this particular case. Number one is furnace and duct cleaning. So we, on this property, we spent about $240 on furnace and duct cleaning. And also, we hire professional cleaners to go in there for $300 to make sure that it gets cleaned up properly, okay? And so, after all that is done, that pretty much, pretty much gives us everything that we need. Okay, so for some of you, don't forget though, I'm not including that here just because we didn't have to pay that this time. However, a lot of the times, what you also want to include, honestly, is your broker's fee. Chances are you might have to pay a percentage or a point on the money that you are borrowing as well. In this particular case, we didn't have to, okay? So I just wanna make sure that you remember that. So let's take a look now, okay? So expenses wise meaning money that had to come out of our pocket to get into the deal would be this part plus this part okay plus that plus this and if we were to add up all the fees here I'm just gonna round it up slightly okay so instead of 32 34 I'm just gonna do 3250 plus the 470 plus the 240 plus the 300 so this is about 4260. So total expenses in is 250,000 plus the 45,000 in reno, okay? That's give and take including some of the unforeseen emergency funds that had to be dipped in. So I always round out expenses. If you've been following my videos, you know I always always underestimate underestimate my revenue and overestimate my expenses to begin with anytime I run any numbers. So that actually came in fairly, fairly well. Plus the 3,200 plus the 2,700 plus the 40, 4,260 right here. Okay. So we have 305 in total. We spent 305 160 around there that sounds about right okay and guess what when we refinance we pulled out 308 thousand dollars so here's the part where you need to focus and for some of you this is very easy to understand okay for some of you this might be a bit of a huh <laughs> so remember earlier we had to come up with 305,160 to get into the deal. However, upon refinance, okay, upon refinance, we put in $308 back into our pocket. I hope you can actually see that. So money, $308,000 going to my pocket, 
and I spent three hundred and five thousand dollars this entire time. What's left over in my pocket? I actually, actually made just a bit over two thousand dollars when I refinanced the property, and this is all fees included. This is all fees included. Again. Next week, we're gonna go into different ways of structuring the deal because for this one, as you probably picked up on it, we had an investor coming in, a joint venture partner coming in. And so that's also why I did not factor in during holding costs or any expenses here on interest payments whatsoever. We're gonna dive into that next week, okay? So I want you to think about it. I haven't even show, shown you the performance yet on a monthly basis. However, here is the thing. Number one, you always know that every single property needs to be a viable business, meaning it has to be making money. So when it's making money, what does that mean? It's got a cash flow. So in this case, even if it's cash flowing at $10 a month, that's not the case, I'm just gonna tell you that. Even if it's cash flowing at $10 a month, what is your cash on cash return on this particular project moving forward? Well, let's do it this way. Cash on cash, basically $10 per month, times 12 months for the year, so that's $120. And then you want to divide it by how much money you put in. However, in this case, we actually don't leave any money left in the deal, okay? We actually didn't leave any money left in, uh, in the deal. So what that means is our cash on cash return in this case is actually infinite because every single penny that we put into the deal was actually came out completely. So what that means is we actually got to take that money now and go into the next project, okay? So yesterday we spoke about some of the ground rules and why people really enjoy the BRRRR process and it totally makes sense is because of the scalability. So one quick note that I wanna uh, discuss with you guys because one of the questions that I always get asked is, so how quickly do you actually want to refinance the property? Well, honestly though, at the end of the day, it is completely up to you. Nobody tells you that you actually have to refinance right away. I've got students where they're like, hey, you know what? I've already made money and I actually don't need to cash that money out. I still got a decent job. The reason why I wanted to invest in real estate is because I want to build my wealth, okay, for the long term. So I'm okay with the money stuck in there for a little bit until I need to. And some of them, depending on the market that you're in, if the year after year trajectory has been going up, 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 and up, yes, you might be okay keeping it in there once again. I'm not condoning that nor encouraging that. However, my point is it doesn't need to be right away. However, I just also wanna give you a bit of a different perspective and this is how I will personally do it is the moment I actually get to refinance, I will refinance that. Why? Because once again, nobody got a crystal ball because albeit this is a really, really nice project, we also had another project that got finished just when lockdown started happening with COVID. So what that means is instead of the ARV being higher, so the appraised value being higher than the forecast ARV, we actually had a deal where the appraised value came in less than that. And the lender decided not to give us 80% loan to value. They decided to give us 65% loan to value. And this is why I'm gonna go into that next week as well, to go into the what ifs and how you can deal with that and the perspectives and the mindset that you need to have to go through and navigate through those potential challenges that are happening, okay? So just wanna put things into perspective is that you can actually refinance anytime. It just really depend, depends on your goal. And this is why I keep telling people financial education and your investment plan is not one size fits all and it should never ever be. So make sure that you have somebody that you can actually reach out to talk to consult with it. That will, whether that be a mentor or a coach or an instructor on a particular strategy, do it, okay? You need somebody like that to help you walk through those scenarios. And just a second pair of eyes to make sure that you are making the proper calculations that you need because at the end of the day, this once again, it's all about taking calculated risks. Okay, so this is the burr process. So as you can see, buy, renovate, and then we rent it out, and then we get to refinance, and then we get to repeat the process again once you take the money out. So 
that's it for the Theo analysis. As I already already alluded and kind of hinted at you, thanks to your input next week. You know what, this is actually what gets me really jazzed because this is what I do every single day as an investor myself anyway, is analyzing the numbers because I really have a lot of fun watching numbers populate themselves because numbers don't lie and it's all very logical, okay? So next week, that's what we're gonna go into. And thank you so, so much again for your feedback, for your love, for your like, for your support, and for your comments and your messages and for your shares, most importantly. Because without you, I sometimes, you know, I kind of go into my own direction and I just keep sharing what I think, uh, what I want to share. However, your feedback is everything. And I really appreciate that. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of this week. Remember, this whole week was a whole series. We started out with Flip and then we went into Burr. And next week we're going to continue with the different ways to look at burrs and analyzing the deal and the process. So stick with me. I hope you have a great evening, a great weekend, and I'm going to see you back here next week with episode 16 as well. So have a great night and live well, everybody.